Hey, let's talk about Cypress today and how you can use it with NX. Now, that part is actually pretty easy because every NX application you generate, be it an Angular app, React app, Next.js app, even Remix app, they get an end-to-end -end Cypress project generated alongside and already pre-configured for you. And the main reason is because NX folks strongly believe in Cypress. Because Cypress put a lot of effort into the whole developer experience of the end-to-end -end testing space, and that helps and motivates developers to write more end-to-end -end tests. It just makes it pleasant to work with, which is another goal of NX itself as well. Now, in NX, you can easily share functionality in its apps and lib structure, which a lot of people really love. But recently, I also got a lot of questions like, if my Mono repo grows and I have more applications and hence more end-to-end -end tests, how can I share common functionality among those end-to-end -end test setups? Well, it's pretty easy as well. So let's dive straight in and I'll show you how to do that. So this is my NX workspace setup. I've created here a React application, but you can really create any type of application you want. It could also be a complete full Angular setup or Next.js. Now here what I have is one React application and you can already see there's that end-to-end -end test setup alongside it that got generated by NX when we did set up this workspace. Now I can run this end-to-end -end test by running NX end-to-end -end, happy narwhal end-to-end -end. and let's just execute it directly without the watch flag so meaning it will just execute here on the terminal which would be the case you have on CI for instance. So this executes all of our tests, all of them pass as we would expect because we didn't really touch anything and so we're good so far. Now Cypress comes with so-called custom commands. Now if we we'll look into that support folder there's an index.ts file which imports from this commands file. And that commands file here shows such as an example setup of a custom Cypress command. What this does, for instance, is adds a login command to the Cypress global object so that we can then use it in our specs file. For instance, if we go up here into the integration file, you can see here there is the ci.login and that login is exactly that custom command which you just have seen. Now, it is very common to extend that Cypress global object with further custom commands. Specifically, as your monorepo grows, you might have more and more of those. And obviously, similar to the functionality you share in your application, we also want to share functionality of our end-to-end -end tests so to keep them maintainable. So we don't want to really localize all of the functionality in the single end-to-end -end test and copy them over and over again, because some of it might definitely be shareable. So let's see how we can do that. The approach is just as you usually would have with the shared libraries. So functionality in an X workspace is shared alongside those libraries. And so we generate a new one. Let me use NX console so we can easily explore what to generate. Now intuitively, since this is a React workspace, I could go ahead and just create a React library. However, these end-to-end -end functionalities are not really framework specific. So there's no React specific code I will have in those commands, but it would rather be just mostly Cypress related logic. As such, I would resort to a more generic setup, which is just for having basic, basic JavaScript and TypeScript support. And the perfect package for that is the novel JS package. And so let me generate a library for that. Let's call it Cypress commands. And since it's a shared part, I usually prefix it with a shared directory. So meaning this will get generated as we can see here in the dry run output under the libs, shared folder, and then Cypress commands. So this immediately signals to other developers in the workspace, this is shared logic, so intended to be used across other libraries and end-to-end -end test setups. Once you have done that, we can just generate the library. We could even choose to run SVZ with it rather than the TSC compiler, but for now it's not really important. So let me just run and set up this library. And what we will get here is we will get this new Cypress command setup. Now the next step is to actually create that custom command in that folder, in that new library that we created. So we can just go to the existing setup and copy over how a custom command looks like. So let me go here to our apps happy now and trend setup. Let me go into the support folder commands and let me just copy over here such a command setup. Let's go down here and then let's create here a new command. I call this new command get element command. And I will explain in a minute what we are going to build. So what I want to build here is such a get element command. So a command that specifically allows me to select elements very easily from the DOM. Now, if you go to the Cypress documentation, 
Cypress has a very specific setup on best practices, and there's a section about selecting commands. And I like how they point out what common any patterns are and what best practices are. For instance, we shouldn't use directly a DOM element or use its CSS class or ID property to select it, but rather we should rely to specific data attributes. And if you scroll a bit down, there are a couple of examples that Cypress suggests. So for instance, as you can see here, we should never use the DOM element, we should never use classes, we should maybe sometimes use the ID if, it really, if we really cannot use something else, but what is the preferable approach is to use something like data-ci or data-testid. So there are a couple of suggested approaches for that. And now I want to create such a command that allows me to easily pick some of those. And so what you are going to do is, first of all, we are going to call this command get element. And here we will get basically the identifier of the element, which is a string, which denotes basically the test data test attribute. And then we just rely on an existing Cypress function. So we return ci.get, and then we will have the data test ID equals the identifier. And we return directly the output of this selector. So what you might have noticed is that the Cypress global object here, as well as this CI object, is not being recognized properly by TypeScript. And the reason is that here in the tsconfig lib, we need to add some additional types, which is Cypress, as well as Node. They will help the TypeScript compiler to actually figure out what the global objects are. And in fact, if we go now here, we can see that it properly recognized the Cypress object. And that means we also get the whole typing support as we code along. So next, what we also want to adjust is here the typing information that Cypress uses to understand how our custom commands is being built. Now, this is still copied from the previous command. So let's rename this to get element. And this here is identifier string, just we have specified below. And this here would be a cypress.chainable jQuery HTML element. So now with that, we have the custom Cypress command built. What we need to do is to also export it from this library. Now, every NX library has this index.ts file at the very root of the library. This is kind of the public API where you kind of export what other libraries or other applications within your NX workspace can consume. So this is a very important but also fine-grade control where you can kind of define your public and private API of your library. Now, as you can see here, a custom shared Cypress commands file is being exported, and this is a leftover from the generated library. So let me just remove both of these files here because we don't really need them right now. The thing we need to do is to actually invoke that get elements command. Now, in our case, all that is needed is really just to invoke that get element command file because we don't really export anything since custom Cypress commands are just attached to that global Cypress object. So all we need to do is whenever this library gets used, it will import this file, so actually invoke it. And by invoking that file, it would run through this code, which would then register our command and therefore make it available globally. Now what we can do is we can actually start using it. Let's go back up to our happy novel end-to-end -end test. And in order to be able to use it, we need to import it here in this index.ts file. So all the libraries in an X actually have a custom TypeScript path mappings, which makes it really easy to import it. You can find that path mapping in the tsconfig base file at the very root of the workspace. And here under that path section, you can see here it uses the workspace name that we have chosen, which in this case is NX Love Cypress. And then it uses the folder structure of where our library lives. And as you can see, it directly points to that entry index.ts file. So all we need to do is import from NX Love Cypress shared Cypress commands. This will make our global command available to the Cypress end-to-end -end setup. Now let's try it out. Let's open up here the spec file and change the following test in here to whatever we want to test in our case. Now in order to be able to grab an element, let's go to our happy now application into that NX welcome component, which is the first one that is being shown when we launch the application. And there's a title section in there, which we want to change. So rather than saying welcome, whatever is being passed into a property, let's just delete that. And let's say NX loves Cypress. 
And we want to annotate this h1 with a data test ID property, which says welcome title. Now, since we have set this up, we can now go here and use the global CI object, use our get element function, our get element custom Cyrus command. And as you can see, it shows up even in the autocomplete setup because it gets properly recognized. We get typing information. So in this case, we will use the welcome title that we just specified. And then we should say dot contains an X loves Cypress. We can go and remove this import because it's no more needed. And finally, we can actually go and run the end to end test again. And this time let's use the watch flag so that we can actually see it in a Cypress test runner. All right, so once the Cypress test runner runs, we see here our spec file. And if you click that, it will open up the browser window here and execute the Cypress tests. And you can see here it uses the get data test ID with the identifier we specified. It properly identifies the title that we changed and therefore makes the test pass. So that was it for this video. I hope by now you got a pretty good overview of how you can not only use the functionality of libraries to share code between your libraries and applications, but also between your end-to-end -end test setups potentially. And you have also seen how you can use the Novel.js package, which provides first-class TypeScript and JavaScript support that is ideal for such use cases, which are really framework independent. And as often as possible, you should leverage those rather than going into a framework-specific library. And the main reason for that is because then in the future, we might want to add an Angular setup to that workspace and reuse some of the functionality there as well. So as long as you don't depend on any React, Next.js, or other framework type dependencies, go for Novel.js. That's it. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter on NX DevTools, and see you next time.